And so, so. It's been in Joey's life down there. Lexicon will take care of the short. Let's go out some of these levels of the shouts thing. Just make his shouts a little bit more subtle, I think. And in fact, those sped up vocals, which is quite cool. This is something that Prince used to do is record something on the tape machine at half speed and then double the speed on the tape machine so it speeds up and you can do the same slowed down as well so when it speeds up we got this uh, that kind of effect and we slowed it down which was very cool we got this which I just love and certain certain things on the computer can come close but I love the real thing as well yeah some of these shouts are just a bit loud because you get the drums as well and they're different drum takes so it's a, it's, a, it's a really unique way of keeping an instrumental going to be honest all those little shouts Kind of sounds like he's answering the synth. Very cool. Talking about the synth, we might just calm him down a little bit here and there. You know, automation, volume automation is really important to be honest in the track to just find, give everyone their space, you know. By, by, by turning something down, you just you just give something else a lot more space. And that make make everything seem like it's got its place in the track. The impressor, really, really good. And I use this all the time. Just control things, make them sound punchier. these and just control a bit of a few of those snares as well. That's something I do a lot actually, just clip gain things that are hitting the compressor too hard down, although that's kind of what the compressor is doing. Sometimes I find a colour and a sound I like and I prefer just automating the volumes of things to just give the compressor a chance. It's not slamming the compressor as hard. I think now I'll probably afford to just push that high end a little bit as well. Someone, someone left on, which we can again apply a little bit of compression to, maybe the stay 11 again. This is 
nothing impossible. impossible. I don't care what it looks like. Touch of colourful compression. Big breath for Bishop to start with. The question is. Right, let's listen to it from top to bottom and see where, the, see where we're at. This is a lovely moment. I made uh, I made McNasty's whole family uh, get in the live room and do some claps. His wife and uh, he's a great artist as well, Umpa, and two kids shoved them in the live room and said, "Get clapping!" And it's one of the it's one of the best moments in this track, to be honest. Let's try something I haven't tried before, compression wise. BA6A, because I'd have two of them lying around to put claps on. <laughs> nice tons of character. Nice, show everybody a little bit. I don't know what it is, 300, maybe 400 out. Oh, let's find it first. Let's And a bit of colour. I love the high end on these things, to be honest. Someone hitting a mic stand here. Yeah? It's the loudest clap in the world. It's really nice, you can hear the kids laughing and parents laughing at the kids, the kids laughing at the parents. Right, let's make them sit then. is put another EQ on Bishop, but one that we're going to automate in. Something with a bit of poke. Why not? Even though there's one sitting behind me. It's a really nice trick for vocals, boosting kind of one and a half to two K to uh, make them pop a little more, just bring out some presence. And then if we just automate that, the outro. 
is coming back. It's coming back. Your marriage is coming back. Your kids are coming back. The business that failed, it's coming back. Oh, God, it's coming back. Whoa, it's coming back. Mama Basha, the boy, it's coming back. I think you have to go through the science of mixing for that scientific bit to become instinctive. I don't have rules, so I don't always, you know, cut the bass on, a, on an electric guitar or even a kick drum, you know, it can be really subby or it can be more of the kind of jazz thing. Now it's it's become a little bit instinctive that I think, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut this and make space for that, eh? and making each individual sound as strong as it can be. Go for a print. Is that another call? Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. Fuck knows how this is gonna go. The question is...
it's coming back. Whoa, it's coming back. Mama Bash, like a boy, it's coming back. Yeah. That was a good take. Yeah. The levels were great, by the way. Good. Okay. Holding on for dear life. Yeah, that, felt, that, felt, that felt really nice. Yeah, riding some of the groups, uh, some of the individual channels as well, like the like the bass and that Nord lead as well. Um, like automating volume like that just gives the track a bit of life and movement all the way through. And doing it on the desk is just a kind of tougher way to do it, but I prefer... I prefer doing it with my hands, like it, it kind of just feels like I'm completely part of the track and I start getting goosebumps at certain moments and all of that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, although, you know, I'm, I'm going to send this mix to, to McNasty and see what he thinks, but if he wants a tweak, I'll just have to do it again. And, you know, I, I, I treat mixing like a performance, like the same as if I was playing drums, same as, I was, as if I was playing bass, I just treat it as well, I'm giving you a performance. If you want another performance from me, I'm going to do another performance. Rather than just something up, something down. You know, let's, let's say he just wants Bishop up a little bit. We can we can push Bishop up, but I'm still going to kind of do the performance again, basically. Um, yeah. And it's loads of fun as well. I think there's a bit of dirt on the lens, bro. There's a fingerprint, like, on the lens. 